Okay, we've just finished our discussion of um, um, of uh, priorities and using the nice command to change priorities and um, things of that type in which I recommended that, uh, if possible, avoid using the nice command any more than you have to um, <coughs> to avoid getting into political messes and actually slowing down your system. What is better is if you can schedule your task so that your system doesn't get overwhelmed because you are scheduling jobs in such a way that they only get executed when there's free time on your systems. Um, Linux has several devices that can be used for job scheduling, the, um, which are discussed in Chapter 9. And we have discussed some of these earlier. The one is the AT command, ATD which the book discusses on page 409. And that command is generally used for scheduling a job to be executed at a certain time. Um, I don't use this command very much because I don't have jobs like that very often. <coughs> but you can schedule a job to be executed at um, uh, 10, 15 p.m. Or you can schedule it to be executed in, uh, in exactly two weeks from now. Um, and it works cool. Um, I don't use it very much because it the AT command executes the job just one time. Um, it's not meant for executing it every two weeks or every day at 1015. It's for executing it one time. And uh, generally, that's what I not what I need to do, so I don't use it much. Um, on the other hand, there is um, the cron job, which, uh, the cron task, which we have used before. And um, we'll look at our cron tabs here, see if we have a cron tab. And the cron tab, whoops. Cron tab minus E for edit. Um, and we have a cron tab here that basically, and, and basically these are set up in, with a syntax very much like this. You use the command um, um, cron tab minus E or cron tab minus, mi, cron tab minus L will just let you look at will just list your cron tabs for you. Cron tab minus E takes you into basically the VI editor. And you can edit your cron tabs and enter new cron tabs. And, um, and the book is very good in giving you a list of uh, the fields that you need here to add to add your cron tab. And then you add the command after that. And I guess you can actually have some arguments after the command. And it can kind of be a one-line command. But I rarely do that. I almost always include everything I want in the cron tab in some shell that I write so that the cron tab job is just one um, path name. And that's it. And um, um, I, you could do a little more than that, but you can't do much more because you can't. You, everything's got to be one line. You can't put a whole program in there. You can't um, string multiple commands together. Uh, it, it's, it tends to be limited what you can do. I think you're best just writing a shell script that has everything in it that you want in the cron tab. And cron tabs work quite well. Now, there are other pro batch processing systems to help you schedule jobs. Um, I've used these a great deal. I think they're available for Unix, but now that I use Google and stuff, I, I can't find exactly what I want. Um, they're apparently not r as readily available as I thought they were. But <clears throat> here, if you're in a big system, 
suppose you're in a big environment, you've got thousands of users, they have certain jobs that have to be done at certain times, you've got deadlines where the uh, end of month accounting for your bank has to be done, it takes hours to crunch that, um, there's always people sending in these big um, jobs to do these monthly, weekly, hourly, minutely reports for their managers that also take a lot of crunching time. You need to get those day-to-day um, -day tasks off the system so you can free the system for five hours to do the end-of-month things that the IRS or the SEC requires. You got all these jobs to handle and to schedule and whatnot. There are schedulers that can handle that sort of thing. Uh, they are routine on some computers, uh, particularly older computers, the big mainframes, the IBM mainframes, the uh, Vaxes, the Primes, uh, things like that. And what they have is they will have a system, um, I guess sort of like Crontab or, or, or only you don't submit things and say, I want to execute it now or I don't want to execute it then or whatnot. But instead, you submit a script. <coughs> you submit it into a queue. And that, um, and there may be three or four queues. Uh, like there may be a queue big. We only execute big jobs and a queue, but we do it slowly. Uh, and a queue, um, you know, everyday things like uh, daily reports or weekly reports and a queue that says high priority or maybe the queue is just named, you know, the monthly report. Well, maybe not that long, but, you know, it's just the queue has the name uh, um, um, MP for monthly report. And um, what happens is these queues, the operators or, or systems administrators can schedule these in such a way they can turn them on, they can turn them off. They may be able to schedule them like with cron type system where they turn themselves on and off automatically unless you override them. And so, and the jobs that get filed into the queues, they get executed one at a time. They get executed when one finishes, another one starts. But so you're not putting them in and saying, I want to execute it at such and such an hour. You're really putting it in this queue that says, execute me as soon as you get some time to do it. And so it's more like a line at a bank, you know. The clerk is standing up front, and they have several queues. There's one for customers with more than $100,000 in their account. There's one for customers with um, um, 10000 to 100000 And there's one for customers with less than $5 in their account. And, um, and then, um, and they... People line up in the various queues, or in this case, jobs line up in the various queues, and they get executed one by one as they get a uh, task, as, they, as there is time to execute them. And the operators have the ability to switch ones around, so, you know, like they can basically say, well, that, that big queue is, um, we need a little more processing there. So we'll let it take two jobs at a time. So that's sort of like putting two clerks that take the hundred, uh, 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 that take the queue, handle the queue that has the $100,000 plus uh, people in it, where there's one that has the, uh, you know, one clerk that handles the one with all the other people. Um, those type of systems do, I believe they do exist for Linux and Unix. I'm, I'm sure they must. The ones that I found through my Google search were surprisingly proprietary. Um, there must be open source ones, but, um, oh, I did see one open source one, but it wasn't well documented, so I, I didn't, uh, so I'm not naming it. However, I will say um, that what I have seen done and possibly even done myself is the print system on any computer, take a Linux computer, the print system, you set a job up for, um, you set a printer on a system and 
um, people send jobs to that printer. And it prints those jobs in the order that it is sent to the printer, um, one at a time. And you can set up three or four printers. And you can disable or enable a printer. And so you can turn these print queues on and off and do things like that with them. Moreover, the truth is, if you really play around with the Unix print system, you can, it, you don't have to have a printer. But you can have the, 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 the driver software that does the processing that, um, that um, uh, prepares the print job. Um, that's, that's part of the processing that goes on. That's the clerk at the end of the queue. You actually don't have to have a printer sitting there. There's ways of getting around the problem of not having a printer. So I guess what I'm saying is there are ways of hacking the print system on a Unix system or a Linux system so that you can use the print system as kind of a glorified batch processing system. And I have heard of that being done. I, I think I've even played with that a little bit at one time myself, where I did it on a very limited basis. And I've done it on, uh, extensively on non-Unix uh, non, non computers with really good results. It won't work on, it may not work on every non-Unix computer. Or it may be hard to do that on some computers. On most Unix computers, though, it, it's a pretty easy process. Um, we will talk about it later. There's a couple different print systems used on Linux or Unix nowadays. By and large, people have been moving to the CUP system, which is a new system. And I have less familiarity with it. In particular, I, I'm not quite sure how you go about hacking it. but um, um, But I'm sure it's doable. The old traditional Linux print system or Unix print system is very easy to hack for various uses and make it do things that it really wasn't meant to do, but it does very effectively, including um, do some of your scheduling for a, 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 in, a, in a batch type process that is much more sophisticated than you have with either um, uh, the ATD system or with the um, uh, CronTab system. Not, not to dish those systems, because each one has its own place. In, and um, each one does something good, especially as you, in case you can't tell, I am a huge fan of the CronTab system. The CronTab system is just totally insanely cool and really something we really, really need. Um, the uh, but the um, um, but but in some environments these batch processing systems are very important, such as actually they're used in kind of like supercomputing systems. There's a huge job of trying to schedule tasks because uh, everybody wants to do their jobs on a supercomputer, and you can only run so many at one time. Uh, particularly when these are huge jobs that take um, vast amounts of time to run. So scheduling is a is a, a real issue both in the high high end scientific environment and in the um, in some parts of the business environment, um, or in the movie industry where they're trying to do all these gra all this graphics rendering where they're they're making movies and they have a huge amount of graphics rendering to do very time consuming type stuff even with today's modern computers and that always gets you into a scheduling thing and so um, um, and that always involves the computer operators and the systems administrators and um, and sometimes a lot of politics and that's what you want to keep out of okay i think i've um, i have finished the scheduling um, I will come back with another part of the video in which I talk a little bit about monitoring software. That's not talked about in this chapter, but um, it is the core of the lab that covers this chapter. So I will talk about that a little bit. Okay. And besides, that's the major reason why we study 
uh, this chapter. So, um, bye-bye.